In this video, we're looking again at why the balance of payments balances. We're looking more detail, and in particular, we're looking at the relationship between exchange rates and the balance of payments. Where are we in the syllabus? We're now looking not at a content dot point, but at one of the economic skills dot points. You can see here that we're asked to explain the relationship between the current account balance and the balance of the capital and financial account. This point is a pretty clear crossover between the balance of payments and exchange rates. It's very important and it's kind of complicated. So let's take this step by step. Now we know an important relationship exists between the current account and the capital and financial account. That is that capital inflows will lead to greater net primary income outflows. So a higher capital and financial account surplus will lead to a greater current account deficit. But how does this balance? How does the current account deficit plus the capital and financial account surplus sum to zero? Why are these amounts able to sum to zero? Of course, including net errors and emissions. Now, the reason the balance of payments balances is because of Australia's floating Australian dollar. Under a floating Australian dollar, think about where equilibrium occurs. So if we have this graph here, we know that equilibrium is 80 cents US. Equilibrium is where the demand for Australian dollars equals the supply of Australian dollars. So under a floating exchange rate, equilibrium occurs where the demand for Australian dollars equals the supply of Australian dollars. Again, just to hammer it home, Equilibrium in foreign exchange markets occurs when the demand for Australian dollars equals the supply of Australian dollars. But what makes up each of these sides? Let's look at demand for Australian dollars first. So demand for Australian dollars is determined, for, is determined from exports, because this represents money received, money coming in, inflows of primary and secondary income to Australia, so income credits, and also capital and financial inflows. So any inflows into the balance of payments represents demand for Australian dollars. Let's look at supply of Australian dollars. So the supply of Australian dollars is determined by payments for imports, primary and secondary income outflows, so money, financial flows moving out of Australia, and capital and financial outflows. So any outflows from the balance of payments relate to the supply of Australian dollars. So think about it this way. The demand for Australian dollars equals exports plus income credits plus capital inflows. The supply of Australian dollars is determined by imports, income debits, and capital outflows. Okay, this next part can be quite complicated and we need to be clear about each step when we are answering questions about the links between the balance of payments. So what you should do is pause it, take some notes, make sure each step is clear before you move on to the next one. We start with the supply of Australian dollars equals the demand for Australian dollars. This is how things occur under a floating exchange rate. Now the supply of Australian dollars equals all outflows, money leaving the balance of payments. We know the supply of Australian dollars equals imports plus income debits plus capital outflows, money leaving the balance of payments. Demand for Australian dollars is all inflows to the balance of payments. So demand for Australian dollars equals exports, income credits, and capital inflows. So we know from step one that demand and supply are equal under a floating exchange rate. So what we can do is we can just combine both sides of this into an equation. So demand for Australian dollars is exports plus income credits plus capital inflows equals supply of Australian dollars, which equals imports plus income debits plus capital inflows, sorry, capital outflows. Just focus on the writing there. So what we can do now is we can rearrange the equation. So 
if we have imports and then we minus exports to bring imports and exports together. And then we have income debits and we minus income credits from that side and we bring them together. So we can see here that imports minus exports plus income debits minus income credits equals capital inflows minus capital outflows. Now this might look familiar to you. On the right side here, this is our capital and financial account surplus. On the left side here, M minus X, okay, that's Bog's deficit, Y debits minus Y credit, credits, that's NPY deficit, is the current account deficit. So I've got a CAD is equal to a capital and financial account surplus. Now, this is complicated. So that last slide is the key one in understanding this relationship. But a brief summary. The floating Australian dollar ensures that the, the CAD and the CAFA surplus balance. Remember, start with that the supply of Australian dollars equals the demand for Australian dollars. Add the components for supply and demand and find the balance. And remember to practice this to get it just right.